What's up, zoos? Just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, he follows it up with a video about Nambla. I am happy to say that today we are talking about a group of people more horrible than zoophiles. That's right. Today we're talking about the worst gay rights activist group you've never heard of, which is the North American Man-Boy Love Association. If you don't know who they are, let me tell you a bit about them. NAMBLA is a self-proclaimed gay rights activist group. Stands for, like I said, North American Man-Boy Love Association. We're talking about pedophiles, baby. In reality, they're not a gay rights activist group at all. They're a bunch of pedophiles who only exist to rationalize their pedophilia and manipulate themselves and the general public uh, and their victims into thinking that pedophilia is a good thing. Fucking horrible. Out of all the topics I could have chosen. Nambla's goal, if you can call it that, is to uh, abolish age of consent laws in the Western world. I know. Those rules that are there to uh, be able to punish people when they fuck with the innocence and purity of a child. Time to get rid of them. And it might surprise you to hear that at one time they were a very public group and in fact marched alongside other gay rights activist groups in pride parades. However, they're very secretive. Despite their claims that they are educating the general public about the benevolence of man-boy love and pedophilia. It might surprise you to find out, or not, depending on how you feel about this topic, but it might surprise you to find out that they're actually protected by the First Amendment uh, because they advocate for changing the law and publicly not breaking the law. Um, they're allowed to exist under the First Amendment. In 2000, the ACLU actually defended these guys uh, in a case that involved the murder of a child. Sorry, the rape and murder of a child because NAMBLA itself uh is protected free speech you can advocate for normalizing pedophilia but until you publicly or i guess maybe privately i'm not sure how the law works but until you publicly say that you should go rape a child you're protected by the first amendment don't rape a child fucking this comes in the wake of doctor disrespect i could not find a better time to do the nambla video let's get into the history of nambla NAMBLA was started in 1978. The co-founders were David Thorstad and Thomas Reeves. There might have been more co-founders, but because of the secret nature of NAMBLA, it's kind of hard to get the details of exactly how they started. Despite David Thorstad being an outspoken pedophile and advocating for the rights of pedophiles to, you know, sleep with children, um, there is no evidence to suggest that he ever committed a sex crime with the child. Having said that, having said that, you know what I want to say. But I won't say it. But having said that, I think that maybe, I mean, innocent until proven guilty, but you're out there being a pro-pedophile activist. Like, what else am I supposed to think? Thomas Reeves, however, uh, was not only arrested for sleeping with a 15-year-old boy, um, also admitting publicly in front of a gay rights, uh, some sort of event, um, to having sex with boys as young as 14 when he was a fully grown adult man. NAMBLA started their journey originally marching in gay pride parades, but thankfully they were quickly shunned and ostracized by the LGBTQ community as a whole. Oh, well, what were they marching for? What was their message? Well, they campaigned that their vile attraction and the reason they were able to get away with it for as long as they did is that they campaigned their vile attraction as a sexual orientation, thus giving them, at least for a moment, I'm sure I'm sure they manipulated and confused a bunch of people on this, um, but because they were marching as their, uh, their man-boy love as a sexual orientation, they were able to walk uh, alongside gay and lesbians at the time, but it didn't seem like the uh, gays and the lesbians bought it for long. At one time, there were NAMBLA chapters in New York, Toronto, Canada, and San Francisco. This is a bit of a spoiler, but uh, the San Francisco chapter still exists. I have half a mind to start a letter writing campaign. That would be free speech. That would be protected free speech. As time went on, shame from the gay community as a whole and the general public who knew of NAMBLA um, forced NAMBLA to become more private and private and underground. NAMBLA's meetings shifted from being out in the open to being invite only as their paranoia of outsides and law enforcement infiltrating the group grew to uh, a correct degree, I would say, a very correct degree. Uh, these guys should not, 
I don't think they should be allowed to exist, but I'm not a lawmaker. Nambla believes that the age of consent laws should be abolished as they are oppressive to both grown adult men and young children alike. They also believe that young children yearn for uh, sexual contact with adult men. I don't buy it, but I'm not a boy lover, what can I say? Nambla believes that because ancient Greeks practiced and accepted pedophilia, that it must have been a good thing. They also believe that children, like I said, crave and yearn man-boy love relationships. However, I suspect Nambla doesn't believe all this bullshit. I believe that they feed themselves as bullshit and they keep telling themselves it's okay, so at one of two things will happen. Either they will fully believe that it's okay, or they will fool the general public into accepting it. Um, but I think they know this is evil. And uh, we're going to read some letters here from some of the NAMBLA members that, uh, well, to be frank, I'm not buying it. Now, uh, disclaimer, you might see me wearing a different shirt later in this video. This is because I had a fully fleshed out script that ultimately went nowhere because I've got severe ADD. Um, so I figured I'd do everything in bullet points and instead of making the case that pedophilia is wrong, I would instead do something similar what I, to what I did with the last Zoophile video where uh, I kind of go under the assumption that you already think Zoophilia is wrong and then I further solidify that point. But then I remembered, um, anyone who's a good, normal person also thinks pedophilia is wrong. So this is more of a, hey, this group exists video. Uh, but the script ultimately went nowhere because I don't know what I was trying to do with it. But I might be wearing a different shirt when I talk about an FBI agent, so stay tuned. But for now, let's get into the letters. This letter comes from August 11th, 2021, and it's called Kids Wanting Their Own Say. Um, and I'll let Nambla explain this to you. The following was sent by a correspondent who wants to stay anonymous. He found the following Dear Abby letter that dates back many years, but nevertheless makes an important point about young people. Dear Abby, I am a 12-year-old girl. My birthday is next month, and I can't wait. I'm looking forward to being a teenager. But more than that, when I'm 13, adults won't think of me as a little kid. Most adults think that when you are 13, you are more responsible than you are when you're only 12. But actually, you aren't. It makes me angry when adults assume that I'm irresponsible because I'm a little girl. Some of the teenagers I know act like two-year-olds. Please publish my letter, Abby, so adults will know how people my age feel when we're treated like little kids. When we are not. Letter writer says, I know this is not a boy and Nambla is boy love, but age of consent and when people are not just boys are able to make decisions about their bodies. I thought you might enjoy this. So this is something they do. I'm gonna get some water before we go on. So you'll see as we read some of these letters, Nambla will publish stuff like this, uh, which w things that w like would otherwise be like innocent and harmless, like a 12 year old girl writing into a Dear Abby column saying, I'm excited for to, to, to get more adult responsibility, to stop being treated like a little kid, when 13 is still a little kid, not old enough to make uh, decisions, not old enough to drive a car, not old enough to make decisions that'll permanently change the uh, way she interacts with the world, the way she thinks about sexuality, the way her mind matures. Um, but, you know, old enough to stay at home alone for a couple of hours, watch a PG-13 movie. Um, Nambla will take stuff like this that's otherwise fucking harmless. It's actually kind of adorable. This little girl is advocating for her right for, you know, more responsibility around the house. Maybe she, maybe her parents said she couldn't get a dog until she's 13. I don't fucking know. But what I do know is that this letter has nothing to do with um, the age of consent. This letter has nothing to do with sex. And Nambla knows that. Nambla knows that. But here it is in the published letter. So not all the letters get published. But here it is. Um, and the person who sends it in clearly says, uh, age of consent brings up that, hey, look, this is a valid argument to age of consent. A 13-year-old doesn't want to be, oh, sorry, a 12-year-old girl doesn't want to be treated like a little kid. I think this argument is made out of elastic because of that stretch, okay? And this is, this is one of the more tame letters, by the way. This next one comes uh, May 14th, 2023. So these guys are still at it. Dear Nambla. 
Hi there, my name is JC, and I'm in my 40s. I'm a man living in the United Kingdom. I know that NAMBLA is an American organization, but to be honest, I haven't found any UK equivalent. I mean, don't get me wrong, man. Like, I love living where freedom rings, but if you tell me you don't got a NAMBLA equivalent in the UK, it's not bad. A bit about me. I've been attracted to men since I was attracted to anyone. And since I was about age 8 to 14, have had various sexual encounters with other boys in school. Were these experiences harmful? Absolutely not. And why would they be? The only time I felt negative emotions from these experiences was when there was the risk of others finding out because I knew the trouble I could get into. Oh, and the other times when I felt negative effects linked to these experiences was when I heard casual homophobia being used around school. In other words, all negative effects were from society and not from the sexual encounters themselves. First, let me say, uh, I'm sorry you had to deal with rampant homophobia in school. That's not fun. I don't like that. In both my junior and high schools I've been in, I've always been the outcast loner type, in which I would be friendlier to the younger boys as I could relate to as they weren't yet in puberty. I think boy lovers are designed by nature to love and protect boys, and I think that boys really can pick up on this and do respond positively. Um, yes, yes, young boys do absolutely uh, respond to a mentor, an older mentor, and an older protector, um, as I think that generally young boys uh seek role models to emulate themselves it's why every kid wants to be an astronaut it's why most young kids want or young it's why most young boys want to be an astronaut or a cowboy someone who goes on adventures someone who saves the girl or like a soldier someone who defends our country um so yeah i'll agree boys really can pick up on that uh kind of mentor that loving mentor thing and they do i would imagine respond positively uh, what I worry, though, is that you're confusing that for sexual type stuff. As I grew older, so did the age of my attraction. That is, until my age of attraction got in the range of 8 to 12, where it stopped. While I continue growing older, side note, if this email gets published on Nambla's website and you, the reader, are thinking that the reason I'm attracted to boys is because I had sexual encounters with other boys when I was younger, I would like to challenge you to find one piece of empirical evidence from a non-biased study that supports this assumption. I'm going to turn that around. It's called cycle of abuse. Uh, what you, what, what the kind of abuse you're subjected to as a child, at least to my knowledge, um, is the same kind of abuse you're likely to repeat as an adult without some sort of self-awareness or therapy um i wasn't gonna say that the reason you're attracted to young boys is because you had you started having sex way too fucking early um but now that you've said that i think that would be apt i think that would be apt i'm not a psychiatrist though i think there's certainly messed up in your old noggin for you to be into children from when i turned 16 to the age i am now I have had yearning desires to have a relationship with a boy, they say in parentheses, consensually. There have been moments in my life that I nearly had a close, intimate moment with boys who expressed a desire for sex. Unfortunately, I've had to turn down these requests because of consequences that could have raised from it, as the age of consent in the UK is currently 16, and there is much less of a chance of me changing the world from inside of prison. That's true. There's much less of a chance you changing the world from inside of prison. However, I said this in the zoo file video, but it doesn't have to do with human exceptionalism. It has to do with you being a fucking adult. A child younger than the age of 16 has expressed to you a desire for sex and you nearly had a close intimate encounter. Well, let me just say, good on you for not going through with it. Uh, the writer says, so I have some questions. I truly feel like my life won't be complete without having a relationship with a boy, unfettered by oppressive government policies and hysterical social judgment. In the same way as a heterosexual man who's attracted to adults might feel like his life wouldn't be complete without a partner. I feel that my life without loving a boy, without the worry of what society or the law would think, would be a life half-lived. That's why my first question is, is there really hope? I'm going to break it to you. Uh, no, there's not. There's not hope for you. 
More specifically, are there signs that on the horizon we might see the acceptance of man-boy love, just like we've seen a movement towards the acceptance of homosexuality between adults? And could we, perhaps, use the timeline of acceptance of homosexuality between adults to predict when and how man-boy love might also be accepted? I have a question for you. Man-boy love. Once you're a man, you're a man forever. But you're only a boy to a certain point. I, I've read some of these letters and this is the kind of thing like I want to have I have desires to have relationships consensually of course with boys or with a boy are you forgetting that they age like when you're the 14 year old you're fucking with now turns 20 are you gonna go find another 14 year old now you could say I want to be a polyamorous man boy lover and I want to rape several children you have to fuck up multiple boys to get here is the amount of grooming that would take actually worth it they say, my second question, which I suppose would connect to my final question, is what are you and organizations like you doing to catalyze the acceptance of man-boy love and the changing or removal of age of consent laws? What do you want to change it to? And finally, what can I do to catalyze the acceptance of man-boy love and the changing or removal of age of consent laws? Basically, I want to get more involved, but I am limited. I feel alone here. No one to talk to about my feelings about my forbidden love. I don't want to be a loner and live a life of solitary confinement. I wish I could donate, but I have very little money to give. But I suppose this is why I have asked the first two questions, to see if there's any point in trying and to know what kinds of things are already being done. Thanks for taking the time to read this and best of luck in your mission, JC. Um, so I will say, I'm going to answer this guy's question here. Uh, Nambla isn't doing shit. I interviewed an FBI agent about this who infiltrated Nambla, um, and I'll run the clip here. You had said something to the effect of Nambla isn't actually an advocacy group to change the laws. It's more so a place for guys to get together and talk about their um, exploitation and methodology. Was any of it taken seriously, or was it more to just kind of keep up appearances like we're an, act we're, a we're an activist group or we're trying to get this done, but in reality, that's not the case. Yeah, no, that it never took place. This is Bob Hamer. Bob Hamer is a national hero who directly took down eight Nambla pedophiles in 2005 in his undercover FBI sting that started in 2002. Bob not only infiltrated Nambla, he also infiltrated organized crime rings and posed as a hitman for hire, amongst other undercover work. He began his work with Nambla when he was assigned a case wherein he was tasked with uncovering an international underage sex trafficking organization based out of a travel agency. Yeah, I attended two national conferences uh, the first one was in New York. The second was in Miami. And neither of those two conferences was there any discussion about contacting any politician, writing letters to the other. Nothing was about the alleged mission of NAMPLA, which is to abolish age of consent laws. There, right. there, was, there was no political discussion at all. And the first meeting I attended in New York was more about celebrating the 25 years of NAMBLA and where they go from there. In the second meeting that I attended in Miami, Florida, uh, again, it was just about where do we go? The, the organization is weak. It needs new leadership. It needs new strength. It needs new direction. But there was never any discussion about how do we contact our legislators how do we get the age of consent laws abolished which is their position on why they deem themselves a first amendment organization nambla doesn't actually do anything to uh change the laws they're not writing to congressmen they're not marching they're not advocating uh because thankfully we live in a world where we know this is fucked but here's nambla's response to this letter as to your first question there is always hope Societies change all the time, and more often than not for the better. I'm going to bring up real quick here. Nambla says pedophilia used to be a bit more common. The Greeks used to do it. The Romans used to do it. Um, they say here that societies change all the time, and more often than not for the better. So you telling me, two of the other, outside of the pedophilia, two of the greatest societies that ever lived did this pedophilia thing. And then the greater societies that came after it did away with the practice. Are you telling me we fucked that one up? You're telling me we missed that? As you point out, science in the form of empirical evidence supports the benign effects of love of men and boys. 
It, however, often takes a long time for society to catch up to the scientific truth. For too many people, it's do not bother me with facts. I know what I know. Listen, um, I have the study here. Um, and we're going to assume that having sex with a child is abuse because it is. Um, it's not a good thing. And we're going to pull up the study that I uh, put in the notes. According to the independent inquiry into child sexual abuse, rates of self-harm have been shown to be as high as 49% among adult survivors in treatment and 32% among victims and survivors of child sexual exploitation. The risk of childhood sexual abuse victims and survivors attempting suicide can be as much as six times greater than in the general population. They continue with, as to what organizations like ours can do, it is to continue putting forth the truth. The truth being that the feelings such as you have expressed are not only quite common, but are also a potential force for good. The documented prevalence of emotional problems, especially among young boys feeling adrift in a changing society, points to the great benefit that mentorship and bonding with boys would bring men like you. I think they're confusing. There's like there's like these programs you could do like Big Brother, Big Sister. I think they're confusing the beneficial uh effects that having a role model or a like non-sexual mentor like that benefits children like children you grow up in broken homes are fucked from the start dude like god forbid you're a young man growing up without a dad like god forbid like your mother is trying her absolute best i assure you but uh you need both parents um if you're a young boy who grows up with either a shitty father or an absent father, and that's your, uh, that's your, that's your, that's your role model for how you should be as a man. You, dude, you're fucked. So yeah, they're right. Having having older, emotionally intelligent, regularly intelligent mentors is fucking great. It's, it's a great thing for these young children. Um, but Nambla takes that Nambla takes that same thing. Nambla takes this very good thing and then says this also applies. Uh, you should have sex with those children, actually, too. It's good for them. It's good for them. Strong bones. Makes, gives them strong bones. Strong mind. Fucking years of therapy, but their bones get strong. They say, to answer your third question, the producing of this website is owed to the involvement of many people whose efforts remain mostly unsung. You and anyone reading this can find out how to add their... Nope, not reading the rest of that. Nope. Don't. Don't go to this website if you can avoid it. I find it uh, very interesting that uh, as we read these letters, this guy says, hey, just because I exposed myself to a very adult subject, sex, uh, at a very early age, that doesn't exactly mean that that's why I'm the way that I am. Uh, and I don't want to say exposed himself. That I think it's uh, very likely that this man uh, was exposed by someone who should know better. Um, I... I think I think personally, and I don't have any evidence for this, but I do think personally that there's a there's a there's a likelihood that this man was uh, abused sexually at a young age, and that could can be a contributing factor as to why he's like this. But it's interesting that he says, "Oh, don't just think that." No, no, no. I was born like this. Um, when a lot of these letters actually come from people uh, who have been abused or who had started their sexual journey way too fucking early and they just wind up writing an Nambla saying, hey, I'm feeling these ways. Um, just thought it was interesting. Just thought it was interesting. All right, next letter. A lot of these letters are kind of just sad. Here's a uh, letter written on uh, the 4th of July, 2023, um, kind of echoing my statement. It's a poem, I think. I was loved by a man when I was a boy, a dad of a friend at school. So I'm sorry to break it to you, dude, but you were raped and that's fucking horrible. I'm sorry that happened to you. And I think that's why you think the way you think now. I think there's trauma that's been unresolved because anytime a uh, adult has sex with a child, um, it's rape. And I'm sorry that happened to you. I found it exciting before and while I was being loved. It went on during one summer school vacation. After each time, I felt extremely free and connected to everything and everybody. I do not know what the big deal against love. Love is love. I didn't miss. I didn't miss say that. That's. I do not know what the big deal against love. Love is love. Mark. This is what I'm saying, man. It's like it's it's a cycle of abuse. These these men who love boys, those boys grow up to be boy lovers. It's a cycle of abuse, and I, it seems like the jury's out on that. Um, still. 
like it's clear as day. It's clear as day. I think there was some study where it's like if you are sexually abused as a kid, you're like 40% more likely to sexually abuse someone as an adult, a, a kid specifically. I think I got like one more letter and then I'm done with this section. You'll notice something with these letters is that these people are not actively admitting to being boy lovers. Uh, and that's because, because if they did, uh, well, that would be a crime, right? Um, and so Nambla is very, very, very careful about what they publish. Um, and it's just fucking horrifying. Here's a letter, and this will be our last letter of the section. Um, but this is written by an actual pedophile. And in this letter, he talks about uh, mental health and self-harm. So if that's a trigger warning, then you've been warned. Um, but it's interesting. At no point during this letter do they admit to themselves that this is wrong and, get pro and, and try to get help for this problem. What they do is, well, I'll, just, I'll just read the letter. November 26, 2023. Dear Nambla. I wish to remain anonymous. I need your advice. I am not from the US, but I still want your advice. I don't know how to begin. I have always known that I was gay since childhood. I have always known I have to sneeze. <laughs> Ooh, that sucked. I have always known that I'm gay since childhood. Until when I was 14, I noticed that I became more attracted to minors, in particular with boys. Speaking of, this boy wants to say hello. This is my boy, Kitty. This is my boy, Kitty. You can just see his eyes. He hates me, by the way. He hates this. He hates it when I hold him, but I love him so much. I couldn't talk to anybody about my feelings as my school friends would ostracize me, but it did not matter as I felt more alienated by my friends as I could no longer relate to them. And so I became more isolated and withdrawn from my social circles. My mental health became a problem and I indulged in self-harm as a way to cope. That was until I met this 11-year-old pupil at school when I was 15. We had a friendship with homosexual overtones. Unfortunately, our secret was found out and I was denounced as a pervert at school. No charges, but everybody at school turned against me. I never heard of this word before, but everyone called me a pedophile. I looked up the word, and it best describes what I am. I am a pedophile. After I left school, I kept my pedophilic tendencies a secret. I fell into a depression and started drinking to suppress it all. Unfortunately, as the years go by, my mental health declined to the point of getting help. I'd like to say here... If you do have these tendencies, I suggest that you go find help. It does exist as horrifying as it is to face someone and come forward. The fact that you are this type of person. Remember, you're doing a good, loving thing for yourself. And moreover, you're doing a good, loving thing for society. Seek help. That means you have to quit your job where you work around children and are a risk of doing something horrible to these children. That means that. If you can get away without having to quit your job or face social ostracization for it, go get fucking help. Go get fucking help. This is fucking disgusting. I went to see a psychiatrist for an assessment for therapy. The psychiatrist asked if I was a pedophile, in which I denied. And that's your fucking problem. What I don't understand is that you know this is wrong, right? Something about this letter tells me that you know... That because this thing that you're keeping secret is so wrong, but you want to act on it and refuse to seek help, it's causing your mental state to decline. And when you go to get help, you deny it. But they go on and say, I got help and was diagnosed with mental health conditions. No shit. I got aftercare and help with my mental health conditions, and I got cleaned up and I got sober. But I still have one major problem. I still have pedophilic tendencies towards boys. Sadly, my mental health is declining again. I am getting help for it, and I've relapsed into self-harm again. Because my pedophilic tendencies are stronger than ever, I want to get help, and I'm making an appointment to see a psychiatrist for an assessment for treatment. Must I tell the psychiatrist the truth that I am a pedophile? I am so scared of the repercussions of my actions if I do. I have thought of suicide as an option in case any of this comes out to my family. I need help and advice in how to approach this problem of mine. Yours, Anonymous. So I will say good on them for seeking help. I don't think, I don't think help is a bad thing. I do think uh, that help can point you in the right direction of, uh, you know, I think the self-harm thing sucks. I don't think anyone should be doing that to themselves. Um, 
but I do think uh, you fucked yourself when you went to go see a psychiatrist. The psychiatrist asked you if you were a pedophile, so they're suspecting it, obviously. And then you told them no. And then when the mental health problems came back, you're like, oh, shit. Well, let me ask NAMBLA, the North American Man-Boy Love Association, those advocating for the rights of pedophiles. Let's ask, let's ask them if I tell my psychiatrist, a mandated reporter in a lot of countries, um, that I'm a pedophile. You don't need help and advice. You came to a place that actively promotes the lifestyle you're living because you didn't want someone to tell you that you absolutely should tell them you're a pedophile. Well, I'll be the one. I know you wrote this in 2023, but I'll be the one. You need to tell the truth. The Bible says the truth will set you free. Uh, and I'm a believer in that. I think if you are truthful with your psychiatrist and you're truthful in wanting help for this and wanting to live a happy life, you'll come forward about this and get the help you need. However, uh, Nambla has something different to say. Their reply is, Dear Anonymous, from what you write, there is nothing wrong with you. What is actually wrong is the judgment of your society. This assessment may not make you immediately feel better, but perhaps as you think about it, it will help you begin to accept yourself. We are all born with a combination of characteristics unique to each individual. These make up the essence of who we are and cannot change. Trying to do so will only cause great unhappiness. You know, it's, it's interesting that they say combination of characteristics. Did you know? That serial killers legitimately have different brains than other people. Their brains are built differently. You can tell if someone is super fucking likely to become a serial killer by a fucking MRI. You ever seen Dexter? Dexter nails that pretty well. Uh, John Wayne Gacy, Jeffrey Dahmer could not change the ways their brain worked. But it was responsi their responsibility to once they knew this, or if they knew this, to uh, not act on these horrible fucking things that they are prone to do. I'm not certain if pedophilia or uh, attraction to minors is something that you're born with or it's a choice, but I do know at the end of the day, it comes down to a choice. The choice is, are you going to permanently ruin, and if not ruin, seriously, seriously harm the psyche of a child or the physical their their fucking bodies uh are you gonna make the choice uh that poses so much risk that you'll either permanently mess up their psyche or their body or the way they interact with the world are you gonna make that choice because that's what it comes down to if you're born with it okay you you still have to make the choice not to and if it's a choice every time well i think that's even more evil but it all comes down to choice and it's your responsibility as a human fucking being to make the correct one and seek help and exploiting children is the worst fucking thing. Anyway, Nambla goes on and they continue saying, for most people, those characteristics combine to work well in society. Huh, interesting. But other orientations or ways of feeling unfamiliar to the majority have often been wrongfully seen as bad or evil. Um, I think Nambla just said here, uh, for most people, uh, the characteristics that make us unique uh, work well in society. And I think that's true feelings and orientations unfamiliar to the majority so uh, i'll go I'll, I'll say it i'll be the first to say it abnormal ways of thinking towards children has often been seen as bad or evil there's a reason most people aren't pedophiles because it's fucking abnormal we know not to do this i would say innately i would say innately we know not to do this but whatever before going on, please understand that we do not advise breaking any laws of your country relating to your attraction, no, no matter how much we may disagree with some of these laws. Uh, and they go on and they continue, and you can, if you find the letter, you can read the rest of it. But they say, despite the fact that they're not going to advocate you break any laws, uh, it's not a bad thing to have these thoughts. They're going to keep this man, and I think this is what they do. This is what they do. Here's a pedophile who's writing to them who is interested in actually seeking help. Uh, and in order to make themselves feel better, to have a better sense of community, to strengthen, this, to strengthen their tribe, they say, oh, no, don't do that. No, 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 no. Thoughts can't be criminalized. Your thoughts are okay. We want you to think like us. We want you to have the evil thoughts so it makes us feel less evil for doing it because everyone's doing it, right? And it's just so fucking horrible. That's that's it with the letters. Maybe I'll do a live stream where I read more letters.
So where is Nambla now? Well, thankfully, kind of, Nambla exists mostly in hiding. They're pretty easy to seek out. And like, again, I'm not going to direct you to your website, but Google fucking exists. Um, but they exist mostly in hiding. Their website is available to the public, but for now, as far as in-person events, it seems like they've gone completely in the dark. However, I do suspect that they still meet in secret. Maybe not full sanctioned Nambla events, but definitely person to person. I mean, how else uh, do you find, do you see how pedophiles online are sharing child pornography? Like they, 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 they meet each other, they talk to each other. But you can read all of their lies, pedophile worship and hypocrisy on their website that I absolutely will not direct you to, but you know, it's out there. And I guess that's it. What do we do about these people? I'm not a fucking psychologist, so I don't know. Um, but I do know exposing Nambla for what they are, exposing them to the general public, po it, it does two things. I do pose the risk of introducing people who want to find a sense of community with these people to these people. But I also introduce the rest of us to a group of horrible individuals that um, also exist. I'm a firm believer in the enemy that you know is in much better than the enemy you don't and for me pedophiles are the enemy so showing most showing more people who think like i do that these pedophiles exist and i'm not telling you where their website is but kind of where you can find them or how they identify um it makes it easier for us to correct this bad behavior nambla was right societies evolve over time oftentimes they they evolve for the better but what they left out is sometimes a cancer in society will rear its ugly head and it's on us, the evolved society, to make sure we get rid of it. But without further ado, that's my video. I want to say to all of you who subscribed due to my zoo file video, you guys got that fucking dog in you, dude. That was awesome. I really appreciate that. Um, I have... I've been sitting next to my girlfriend for most of this experience, uh, like refreshing the YouTube studio app and just watching those views and subscribers go up. And I know I feel proud of myself, but you guys all made my girlfriend proud. And that makes me feel oh so special. And I really appreciate you guys. Um, not that you guys care, but I'm like almost halfway to kind of being eligible to be monetized, which is fucking crazy considering the content I've decided to talk about. I'm not going to make any money, um, but I really, really appreciate all of you guys. Anyone who left a comment, anyone who uh, left a like on the video is my first like real kind of content based video. Um, and it just exceeded all expectations. It hit the fucking algorithm. So I really appreciate you guys. Um, so with that, I'm going to leave you. This is fucking Nambla. Maybe I'll do a Q&A at some point, or I'll uh, explore Nambla's website with you live on stream. I think I could do that on kick. Um, but uh, hey, don't be a pedophile, and I'll see you in the next video.